Let's solve the following compound inequality. So the main thing in solving a compound inequality in, in opposition to a regular inequality is we have two inequality symbols here, which create three sections in our problem, the left, the middle, and the right. So your x should always be in the middle section here. So we're going to solve the middle section, get x completely by itself. Typically, when you solve an equation, what you do to one side, you do to the other side. Just here, what you do to one side, you do to all three sides. So looking at the middle section, if I want to get x by itself, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this plus 3. The opposite of a positive 3 is a minus 3. So I'm going to subtract 3 in all three sections. On the left side, we get a negative 18. Drop down your symbol. 3 minus 3 cancels, so we're going to drop down that negative 3x. Drop down our second symbol, and negative 3 minus 3 is a negative 6. Still solving the middle section for x, we need to divide out that coefficient, so we are going to divide all three sides by negative 3. When it comes to inequalities, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must flip the inequality symbol. So this is going to become a greater than or equal to, this is going to become a greater than, otherwise divide is normal. Negative over negative is positive, 18 over 3 gives us a 6. The negatives 3 cancel out, leaving us with x. And on the right-hand side, we get a positive 2. When it comes to inequalities, we need to graph, write our answer in interval notation. So we are looking at the numbers 2, and we are looking at the number 6. So make sure that they are in proper order with 2 on the left, 6 on the right, smallest to biggest. By the 6, we have the greater than or equal than symbol. Remember that if they have the greater than or equal to symbol, that is an open dot. We are using parentheses. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, I'm sorry, I said open dot and I drew a solid dot, didn't I? And for the less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, we have a solid dot and we use brackets when it comes to interval notation. Less than or greater than, open dot, parentheses. Keep in mind infinities, we also use parentheses. So when we take a look at what we have here, our solutions are between 2 and 6. If we look at the 6, we have the equal than symbol attached to it, so that does mean solid dot on 6. By the 2, we do not have that symbol, so it is an open dot on 6. All right. If we cover up the left side of this, this says x needs to be greater than 2. Now, if x needs to be greater than 2, that tells us we're going to be uh, shading this section over here. You can also read inequalities from right to left, which means x is less than or equal to 6 if you're reading from this direction. You're able to read them from left to right. Uh, just make sure that you are being careful when you do that. Uh, when it does come to these type of problems, when it does come to the shading, though, it is good to note that when it comes to the shading, you have two options. You're shading in the middle or you're shading on the outside. So we know that x needs to be greater than 2. Greater than 2 is to the right of 2, which means we're going to be shading the middle section, not the outside sections here. In order to do interval notation, remember interval notation is your leftmost number, your rightmost number, surrounded by parentheses and or brackets. So on the left we have a 2, on the right we have a 6. Open dot on the left means we're going to use a parentheses on the left. Solid dot on the right means we have a bracket on the right. All three pieces of this are our solution for this problem.